Okay, before we get into the distance between a point and a line, I just wanna go over vertical and horizontal lines. So which one of these do you think is the vertical line? Is it y equals six or x equals negative four? Maybe opposite of what you think. It's x equals negative four. Vertical line equation is always x equal, because let's think of this, one, two, three, four. There's x equals negative four. Well, what about when y is eight? What's x? Oh, yep, still negative four. What about when y is negative three? What's x? Still negative four. So although the y-axis is the vertical, when you have an x equals, that gives you your vertical equation. And then y equals six is my horizontal equation. So y equals six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you gotta think about this. No matter what, y is six. No matter what value x is, y is going to be six. If x is 10, y is six. If x is negative eight, y is six. It does not matter. And as you see, they are perpendicular. They are perpendicular. The reason they are perpendicular is, because if we look at this, this is actually y equals zero x plus b. So it's zero over, we'll say, n for any number, right? Well, what's the reciprocal of that? n over zero. Can you have a zero in the denominator? No, undefined. This slope is undefined. If you went skiing on this, you would be undefined. If you went skiing on this blue slope, you would have a speed of zero. All right, so that's just a review of vertical and horizontal lines. All right. Let's build to understanding how to find the distance from a point to a line. So in order to do that, we're going to need to have this concept first. So let's go through this problem together. It says find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of segment Rn, perpendicular bisector. So there's two things. Let's look at the bisector part. How do we find the bisector of Rn? Correct, we need the midpoint. We need the midpoint of Rn, which is negative seven plus three over two, six plus negative eight over two, negative four over two, negative two over two, Negative two, negative one. Okay. That is the midpoint. Okay. So let's do this. Together. Make it smaller so it's out of the way. Now let's look at the next thing they say. Perpendicular. Well, how would we find something perpendicular to Rn? Exactly, we need the slope of Rn. So the slope of Rn is the change in y, negative eight minus six over the change in x, three minus negative seven, which becomes negative 14 over 10, which is negative seven over five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five. It lands there. So we now have the slope. So the perpendicular slope would be five over seven. So I have the two things that I need. I have the things that I need. I have a point, right? Right there, there's my point. That's going to go through, and I have its slope. So if I have the midpoint and the perpendicular slope, I can find the perpendicular bisector. Negative one equals five over seven times negative two plus B. Negative one equals negative 10 over seven plus B. Oh man, this is getting kinda, hmm. So B is negative one, which is negative seven over seven plus 10 over seven. B is three sevenths. So my equation is y equals five sevenths x plus three over seven. That is my equation. How would I graph that? That'd be very tough. So I gotta find three sevenths. It's like 
somewhere in here. What do you think I can do instead to try to graph this? Because all the question asks for is to find the equation. So we have the equation, but how are we going to graph it? That's going to be tough. Ah, yes. If I know a point on the perpendicular bisector, I just start from that point, negative two, negative one, and then I apply my slope of five sevenths. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can go backwards. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's draw this line. Would I say that that point right there could roughly be three sevens? Yep, it could. So it's okay to have fractions. I would not make you graph this in particular by itself, but knowing this point and applying the slope, you could figure it out, and there's my right angle. So to find a perpendicular bisector, you have to find the midpoint first, then the perpendicular slope. All right, so let's take that and apply it here somewhere. Sally lives on Pine Street, and Pine Street's perpendicular to Elm Street. Chick-fil-A is at the intersection of Pine and Elm, find its coordinates. Hmm. Well, let's first, there's a lot, a lot going on here. We gotta find Pine Street. How are we gonna find Pine Street? It's perpendicular to Elm, so we need the slope of L. You can do it out, or you can just count it. One, two, three, whatever. Or you can see that Jim is nine, zero, and Larry is negative three, eight. So it'll be uh, zero minus eight over nine minus negative three, negative eight over 12, negative two thirds. So that means the perpendicular slope ah, is three halves. Okay, I'm gonna need that. Well, I had the slope. Well, now I need the point. Well, we're coming from Sally. Sally lives here. So it's negative two, negative 10. So I'm gonna find the equation by doing negative 10 equals three halves negative two plus B. Negative 10 is negative three plus B. B is negative seven. So my equation is Y equals three halves X minus seven. So I start at minus seven. Three halves. Well, look, instead of going up and right, I can go down left. That gives me Sally. Three halves. One, two, three. So there is my intersection point. So I have my right angle. And there is my point of intersection. So that's Chick-fil-A. So the point of Chick-fil-A, so we plot it, Chick-fil-A, right? So Chick-fil-A's point, CFA, Chick-fil-A, is one, two, three, four, five, six, two. That is the intersection, right? That is where they intersect. If they did not intersect at an exact point, you would have this equation, then you'd find the equation of Elm Street, set them equal to each other, okay? So if they did not exact intersect at an exact point, you would have to use this equation, find the equation of Elm Street, right? And then set them equal, which I can do for you here. I don't wanna make the video too long, but this, this is a difficult topic. So let's look at Elm. So this right here is Pine, Elm, the y-intercept, 
one, two, three, four, five, six is plus six. The slope we know of L is right here, negative two thirds X. So here is my system. So I'm gonna set them equal to each other. Three halves X minus seven equals negative two thirds X plus six. Hmm. So I'm gonna add this, I'm gonna get 13. I'm gonna have three halves X plus two thirds X. So if I multiply this by three, I get nine six X plus four six X is 13. See how I just made them both six? 13 over six X is 13. I'm gonna multiply both sides by the reciprocal. They will cancel out. X is six. So look at that, X is six. I plug six right in here. Two thirds of six is negative four plus six is two. So there is our Chick-fil-A, right? You don't have to do all this system. You do not have to do this system if it intersects perfectly. If it doesn't or you want to double check, take your two equations, set them equal, solve it out. Okay? So we found its coordinates. Now, it asks, how far is Sally's house from Chick-fil-A? How far is Sally's house from Chick-fil-A? How do you find the, how far two points are? Ah, there we go, the distance formula. And remember the distance formula. Subtract the X's, square it, subtract the Y's, square it, right? Subtract the X's, subtract the Y's. So I have X's, I have negative two minus six, negative two minus six, negative 10 minus two. negative four squared plus negative 12 squared. That's 16 plus 144. 160, 16 times 10, perfect square, four radical 10. So the distance from Sally's house to Chick-fil-A is four radical 10. That is also the distance from Sally's to Elm Street. So yes, we found the distance from Sally to Chick-fil-A, but what we really just did there in those two problems is we found the distance from Sally to Elm Street. You find the distance from a point, the distance from a point to a line is you have to draw a perpendicular, find the point of intersection, then do the distance formula, okay? And that's right here. If I have the point and a line, the distance from the point of the, to the line is you drop a perpendicular in that point of intersection. We use those two points in the distance formula. So in order to find the distance from a point to a line, you need to one, right? You need to one, find the point, or excuse me, find the perpendicular line from the point to the line then find their point of intersection, then distance formula. Okay, there's some problems for you to practice on your own, right? You may have to sit, watch this video once or twice to really get it. And then we'll, we'll go over these two problems or three problems together and we'll spend some more time in class on this. Okay guys, good luck.